Have you ever thought how your smartwatch or smartphone receives an update over the internet and then installs it and starts up with the new features? So these all things are nowadays common in every device. Even in the, our laptop we have something called as a bootloader. So I will be giving a brief uh, demonstration on what bootloader is and how we can understand it more clearly using an STM32 board. So currently I am using an STM32 cube ID and one uh, STM32 nucleo board. So let's first look at the architecture. So this is a common architecture like in our laptop also we have something called RAM and another thing is the memory. So this uh, here board is having this memory layout. So this is the active uh, flash memory layout for this board. So we will be uh, creating a bootloader that will be sitting in a memory location from 0x800 and then there will be our main application that will be from 0x080100. Then uh, this is the RAM. One section of RAM I will be utilizing to create a, create a shared RAM area which will store the status of between application and bootloader and then will be the used RAM area that will be simultaneously used by bootloader or the main application. Okay, so this is correlated as you can see in your uh, smartphones that even if you buy a 128 or 256 GB smartphone some portion of the space is always occupied by the application. Uh, or the phone itself that is nothing uh, part uh, there will be a part of bootloader and an OS in it okay so let's jump into the coding section so here what I have done I have created one project in STM32 cube ID in which we have two configuration one to build a application another to build a bootloader so in order to understand how does the bootloader will be placed in a specific memory location uh, we have to update the ld script so in ld script we are uh, creating the architecture of the ram and the flash that we required for the bootloader so as you as i have shown you for the bootloader i will be utilizing a flash that is starting from the sector 0 that is from here and uh, i have given it as a as of now a length of 64 kb so it will go all the way up to the sector 3 okay and similarly i have created a shared ram area of 1 kb from in the ram and uh, there is a 90 kb of ram available for the bootloader to utilize it and this shared flash i will talk about this later so if we jump to for the application area that is our main concern that the updated application will be sitting into it so the ram distribution or ram architecture is same but the flash area we have increased now the now we are utilizing the flash starting from the sector 4 as the previous three uh, sectors are being taken care uh, taking uh, the bootloader so we are starting from this sector and I have given it as 192 KB of uh, space as our application will not be a big application. So after that what we are doing is uh, we are uh, doing a build for uh, let's set the build configuration to bootloader. So once we set it for bootloader you can see here in the source file. We have these two strike out as it is mainly for the application area. In the bootloader we have nothing much. We have we are updating the major and minor version of bootloader. So just let me restart it. So if I do a restart you can see bootloader is 1.0. Okay some garbage value is coming. We just restart it. Okay, bootloader value is 1 and restarted 0 and error. These are the status. So, if we want, we can just update uh, it to minor version to 1. Then, here we are updating the device status and we are giving a countdown that is, after a countdown of 6 seconds, it will jump 
to the main application area and this ssd30 functions are mainly used for this display so we are printing bootloader what is the bootloader version and uh, the status of the entire system that whether this uh, how many time it has restarted what is the fault code and then we are saying it is jumping to application now the interesting part is how we jump to the application so this is handled by this function so when we say we want to jump to application we are just providing the starting address of the application plus 4 bytes are the reset handler address so we are giving a, a call to the reset handler for this application and we are jumping to that application okay so this is what it is and regarding the status part as if i do a restart then you see that now the restart status is being one so it will show how many time it has restarted and this is the countdown to jump to the application so now as i have updated it i will just save it then i will flash the bootloader okay bootloader flashing is complete so you see here now the bootloader we have updated the version of the bootloader from 1.0 to 1.1 now similarly if i just want to change it to configuration to application you see these all functions are striked out and we have main.c that is relevant for the application for the application part it is same we are updating the version of the application then uh, we have some this device status that we are updating in this application area and here the same ssd function for this uh, small screen we are printing the application version and then just uh, waiting to jump to the bootloader when we press this blue button here okay so when we jump to the bootloader i am just updating the reset counter one time to keep a count how many time i am jumping to the bootloader so here we can do more modification by adding uh, any error code or it's an update for it so everything can be handled so this is how a bootloader is done so it jumps from uh, bootloader to main application from some trigger it will jump to bootloader and again it will update the main application and start your smartwatch or smartphone with a new application so this is how a bootloader works okay thank you